I've already seen what's in here. Intel's a bit of an underdog lately, and it feels great to be able to say that because they've been on top for so long and honestly were more or less responsible for stagnation in the CPU industry for so long that it feels really fitting. Today, maybe that changes a little bit because Alder Lake is unlike anything that has come before from anyone, at least in terms of desktop processors. Uh, I mean, Apple Silicon is technically similar, but that's not x86, and it's not something you can go out and buy for yourself unless you buy a Mac. So these CPUs are really special. And as a result, Intel decided to send over this here press kit to us in order to kind of drive home that specialness that makes it special. So there's a little magnetic flap here. I mean, nobody's gonna have an unboxing experience like this outside of the press, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it. And, oh, that's real neat. Now it says here on the top, built for the next generation of gaming in nice bronze-ish coloring, and copper. And uh, yeah, we've got this here CPU. So I guess these are the performance cores. These uh, eight cores around the, the middle here. These look like clusters of efficiency cores, and I'll get into what those are momentarily. That's really nice, what's on the back? Oh, it's Alder Lake. That's cool. So yeah, the big thing about Alder Lake, it has two different kinds of cores. The performance cores, these big boys here in the middle, and the efficiency cores, these small guys that are in clusters of four on the side here. What that means is that these performance cores can handle your foreground tasks, like your games or your 3D renders, that kind of thing, while the efficiency cores can handle your background tasks, things like Windows Update or Virus Scan, or even uh, in some cases, maybe like a code compile or something, if you don't really care that much about it. So that makes it very different from any other x86 processor that has ever existed. And very different from hyperthreading too, which is something that we've had for a while. Hyperthreading is supported on these performance cores, but not on the small boys. It's got a little stand, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you can show off Alder Lake or you can show off Alder Lake. But it's just us who can show off Alder Lake because nobody else is getting one of these. This is actually like printed on metal. Quite nice. Can I have it? Um, no. Now that plaque is cool, but there's more under here as well. So, these are our new CPUs. Core i5 12600K and the Core i9 12900K. Yeah. So, um, full disclosure, there's nothing in this. Uh, it is in here. And the reason it's in here is because I'm already benchmarking it. It's like, what is what is today? To the 20, 22nd, right. And uh, yep, I'm on that, I'm on, already on it. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look at the Core i5 and see what that looks like. It's a really different form factor. Actually, um, can you get me a Intel CPU? That makes a lot of sense. Cause the die is just re rectangular shaped and it's actually a lot longer than it normally is because of those extra cores on the end, and presumably also because of the Intel XE graphics that's baked into it as well. Okay, this is a Core i7-11700K, and uh, oh boy, that's actually quite a bit smaller. Is it smaller width-wise? No, just in terms of length. You're making everyone at home really uncomfortable with you sliding your chip like that. Why? <laughs> this, is, this is not a... St <laughs> this, <sighs> <laughs> oh! Anthony! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the IHS doesn't look significantly thicker, but it is a different shape that makes it look kind of thicker. So like, it's, it's pretty much the same height, I think. I think the fact that the IHS has to be so much bigger because it's a bigger chip, it just looks kind of more imposing. So normally on a, an Intel processor, you'd have these little notches on the left and right when you put it down to kind of lock it into, into position. 
Alder Lake doesn't have that on the left and right. It has it on the top and bottom. So as you sli you're sliding it into the socket, the top and bottom is what kind of aligns it. Comet Lake, or Rocket Lake and Comet Lake only had them on the front and on the left and right. That's interesting. I was wondering why it was a little bit easier for me to kind of home this into the socket when I built up this bench here. I guess I'll have to show the socket soon too, huh? Well, let's get this cooler off and uh, take a look. Yeah, that socket looks weird, doesn't it? Okay, let's take these nuts off. What we've got here, there are actually two holes on each of these sides. That is because Asus decided to support the previous arrangement. However, the official spacing is quite a bit wider. It is that outer bit. Also, you'll note on the back, the shape of this is actually different from the shape of a previous LGA socket, obviously, but there's no like little nut down here. It's actually very uh, similar to, what is it similar to? I don't know. Unlike previous LGAs, the socket itself, yes, it's like that. Like the arm has to be so long, <laughs> um, but it doesn't pop up automatically. It's locking it down this way so that the, act, the, the lever here comes out towards the bottom of the motherboard rather than coming up from the top with the arm. The arm just locks that down into position. Okay, this is a much bigger box. Um, as you can imagine, I've already been into it, but I haven't opened it properly. So let me open it properly. Oh. Really? Yeah. The other side's kind of already ripped, so I can just like stick my finger in there and... This is an imposing box. And what's under? Ah. It's not a Maximus number anymore. It's now a Maximus Z690, which honestly, that's a lot easier to keep track of. Thank you, Asus. Ah. <clears throat> Let's get this out of here. Oh, but wait, there's more. Look inside. Um, full disclosure, I'm not sure if this hasn't been modified, but as far as I know, this is standard. And uh, there's a little card in here. Uh, I don't think there's anything else in this section of the box, but there's another section of the box, which contains... <clears throat> An ROG Ryujin 2 360 with LGA 1700 compatibility. Unfortunately, we're not going to be using that. We're going to be using our NHD 15 because we have more of those and they're the same. But uh, this is really nice to have. Yeah, this is an update. They've got a three and a half inch full color LCD on this thing with a seventh gen Asetek pump. Interesting. I'm not sure what that means. Not to an industrial PPC fan. Okay, I'm starting to regret not using this. Um, well, it's not too late, but the thing is I would need more Reagent 2 360s for the rest of our testing platforms, so I'm not going to be using it. Sorry, Asus. But this is going to make for some pretty sick builds later on. But it's a 360 millimeter radiator with 120 millimeter fans, and it's got a six year warranty, which is uh, half of what our sponsor Seasonic can offer you. Seasonic's Prime Ultra Titanium PC power supplies feature ultra high efficiency with their 80 plus titanium rating. They're fully modular. They feature hybrid fan control to control overall fan noise with their fluid dynamic bearing fans. They offer up to a 50,000 hour life expectancy along with a 12 year warranty. Check them out at the link below. Thank you for reviewing the awesome Asus Z690 motherboard. Please leave an awesome review. Asus NA Marketing. How generic. It is handwritten on Sharpie. So, you know, somebody actually took a time, the time out of their day to write that. One of the cool things with Alder Lake is the ability for it to use DDR5 memory. And that happens to be what I have right here. This is Corsair Vengeance. We also have G-Skill and um, this HyperX Fury RAM as well. This stuff here is rated for 5,200 megahertz or mega transfers per second. It says megahertz, so um, sorry, Dr. Cutrus. With 38, 38, 38, 84 timings, which uh, that's very different from DDR4. Like 
very different. DDR4 was like in the teens for the first three of those and then in the 30s maybe for the last one. But there's a lot of interesting things that DDR5 can do. First of all, it takes the power management interface from the motherboard and puts it on each of these modules. What that lets you do is each of these modules can control its own voltage and that can be baked into the XMP profile. So you can get that overclock dialed in with more voltage on this dim and not so much on this one because it doesn't need it. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Right, PCI Express 5. Um, not a thing we can test right now. There's no such thing as a PCI Express 5 video card or really any card that I'm aware of, but the slot is there and the CPU has a bunch of PCI Express Gen 4 lanes as well to the chipset and to the storage. So, Overall, I.O. is going to be a big thing for uh, Alder Lake here. So Alder Lake already exists for sale, apparently. It, uh, it was listed on Micro Center briefly, and apparently it was sold at a German retailer. So there are actual 12900Ks in people's hands right now. In fact, I wish I had the retail packaging because it looks pretty cool, even as, as cool as this looks. Um, I would like to have it but we're gonna have to buy it for that. In order to buy it, we're gonna have to shell out, what is it, $619 or 669, depending on where you look. Nice. nice. Which is dangerously close to the 5950X. The 12900K is gonna have a total of 16 cores, eight and eight, so eight performance, eight efficiency, along with hyper-threaded cores for the eight performance cores. It's, it's gonna be an interesting time. I think AMD is gonna be coming out with something similar uh, in terms of well, not necessarily I.O., but a, a kind of a lateral thinking kind of thing with their uh, V-cache, their vertically stacked cache on top of their cores in the next little while. For now, we'll just have to wait for the review to see if any of this makes any sense. And uh, you can wait around here for a little bit, maybe watch some more unboxings that may or may not be more technical. Get subscribed so you don't miss any in the future. Watch the retro tech stuff. Retro time. I can't, I can't do it's, it's retro time because it's not retro time right now, but when it's retro time, you'll know.